Hello everybody, this is Fernando for Godzilla Movie News. With all this news coming out with the Godzilla 2014 film, I thought I would change things up a little bit and add another entry with regards to my Urban Legends channel set of videos. And this so at this time, instead of talking about like paranormal or supernatural type stuff, I decided to change things yet again and instead focus on a topic that I'm a huge fan of and that has to do with the comic book world. Um, ever since I was a little kid and I remember getting my first comic book which was a Superman comic book back in I say it would be probably elementary school. I've been hooked on ever since so it's definitely a medium that I enjoy to this day. I love collecting them. I even sell them on the side as well. And it's it's something that I'm very happy to see now that comic books are becoming far more mainstream with the general audience, especially with all the this uh, golden era of movies that are coming out year by year, and it's very good stuff. Um, but what I was going to talk about was actually an uh, an urban legend that has been associated with one comic book, and that is Death Mate Red, which was co-published by uh, Image and Valiant Comics back in the mid-90s, and it's been blamed, uh, according to this urban legend, as the comic book that essentially burst the bubble, the, the huge uh, explosion of growth that the comic book field enjoyed within the early to the mid-90s. And if, every, if, talking, if you talk to several people who analyzed that era and lived through that era, they would always say that there was one comic book that did it all, that finally was that pin, that needle, that essentially uh, burst that bubble, and that is Death Mate Red. And with regards to that urban legend, um, I did a little bit of research, and here's the information that I come up with. Yes and no, um, it, it is absolutely seen as the catalyst to the implosion of the comic book field uh, within the early 90s. I know um, it's going to sound strange now, but there was a time where the popularity of comic books uh, was so humongous and then it imploded on itself that many it was almost down to the point where the entire field was going bankrupt. I mean, when you had Marvel Comics that went bankrupt, that's how serious this, these things were. And when you had comic book stores that were closing left and right, because of that, um, I mean, that, that's how bad things got on there. So, what led essentially to the the urban legend that Death Made Red caused this? Well, um, it, there were several factors. For starters, um, there was a huge period between, let's say, the late... Uh, no, I'm sorry, the early 90s up until the mid-90s where there was an era of speculators that came into the field of comic books. Um, all of a sudden, comic books were selling by the boatload. And I'm not talking about paltry figures such as a couple of thousand to a couple of dozen thousand. No, I'm talking about millions. Uh, I know it sounds weird now uh, to those of you who weren't living through that era, but at one point, your average comic book um, especially those that were being sold by Image and Valiant Comics, was selling several million copies per month. Nowadays, you have comic books whenever they sell. You're lucky if you get even six figures at the maximum, which is over 100,000. Um, for the most part, most comic books that are the big stars, especially like the Supermans, the Spider-Mans, the X-Mens, and so forth, they're lucky to get between fifty to seventy five thousand and those that are big main event type comics, those are the ones that tend to get over a hundred thousand. But back then, during that huge speculator period, comic books were selling in the millions. It was at one point where um somebody once cited an issue of Turok, the uh dinosaur hunter, I think that that was the name, from Valiant sold uh i think it was over four million copies and it only placed number four on the top ten comics sold for that month so that that's how huge things were when you have a comic that sold over four million copies and wasn't even number one that's the kind of era that this was but like anything involving the roaring twenties uh, mantra um all good things essentially must come to an end and when the speculators, those that thought that comic books were going to be a good way to invest for the future, that were buying these things by the boatload and hoping to sell them afterward, 
Well, the problem with that is when you have too much stuff over one thing, how can it become valuable? And when the speculators left, seeing that they couldn't sell it anymore to anybody else because everybody had these same damn copies, then once they left, then everything else fell into place. Um, everything as far as the implosion of the comic book field. So where did Deathmate come involved? Well, Valiant and Image Comics can be seen as the two companies that, I guess the best way to put it is, that self-served the most in terms of the speculators. Um, they were always releasing new issues, number ones, new collector's items. Um, anyone who's lived through that era that knows the word chromium knows what I'm talking about when it comes to chromium covers. I mean, they were doing every single gimmicky thing possible to try to ensure that um, if, it, if it could appeal to the speculators and cause them to pay a high price, then by all means, you know, why not? Uh, if people were buying them, no matter how ridiculously bad the story was or how bad the art was or how high the cover price was for each issue, it didn't matter as long as people kept buying them. It was so ridiculous that um, I remember reading a story one time that Neil Gaiman, who is one of our more popular comic book writers out there, was one time paid by Todd McFarlane a hundred thousand dollars per issue to write on Spawn. A hundred thousand dollars for twenty two pages of literature. And those pages of course only consist of a few words of dialogue per page. And that was what he was paid per issue. Um because at that time with things selling so well and so many people buying left and right, all due of course to the speculators that weren't really comic book uh, readers, but instead more of collectors, then that's why that was. So one of the gimme things that came about was the combination of these two companies to create the biggest event of all, according to them, and that would be the creation of Deathmate, which would merge both those worlds together and essentially um, have those characters intermingle between one another, all of course at the high price of $4.95 per issue which, you know, we're talking early $90 day, I'm sure if I did an inflation calculator, you know, it'd probably be close to $10 per issue now. Um, yeah, try selling that today. You know, sell a comic book out there for $10 an issue, and you'll be lucky if you have anybody that buys them. But that was the mindset that happened. But what was happening was, again, so many speculators were leaving, and then the real readers, those that have been faithful to the comic book world for so many years before, that were going through this era, they were realizing, of course, how ridiculous the storylines and how paltry the dialogues and the artwork were. That um, another factor that was happening was Image Comics at the time, who were considered the rock stars of the era. Um, they were the super celebrities and they could essentially turn anything to gold. And with that mindset, what they were doing was they were notorious, absolutely notorious for having everything ship late um, if, if if it could ship late it would and it would even ship later than that that's what it was like in the terms of the image world and um, yeah, I mean, what, I'm talking comics that let's say if they were solicited to the comic book stores for release let's say in July you were lucky to get them before the end of the year and that was because again these artists and those that work with image if they're getting paid all this money, why would they want to hurry up and, you know, try to sell more issues when all it, all it is for them is just more extra work when they could just, uh, just put out something paltry and have it sell millions and get money from that, you know what I mean? So, when that was happening now, those uh, loyal readers, including those that were from Image, were leaving as well, but it affected the comic book stores themselves because what would happen was anything involving comic book sales at, at comic book stores, it, what people don't know is that at comic book stores, they're ordered months ahead of a time and the payment has to be made up front. It's a unique kind of world in where you don't really pay for the item when, until you receive it. No, you pay for the comic book up front and generally it's three to six months ahead of time. So let's say if you wanted to order Superman, and I'm just throwing a number out, like Superman issue 200, and it's coming out in December, then at a, as a comic book store, you have to order it sometime in June or July. 
because that's how long it takes generally for these things to be written, drawn, inked, colored, published, printed, and then sent and then mailed out. Uh, it's that kind of cycle. And so what it would do is it would store up a bunch of the uh, cash flow that com these comic book stores had, which is fine. I mean, as long as the issues came and fans bought them, then you would have a continuous cash flow of income coming in from the fans, and then, of course, the expense from getting new orders later on. But the problem with Image was that they would, of course, be so late in their comics that even the distributors, and there was one that's still out there that's called Diamond Publishing, they're the ones that essentially ship all the comics to from all the companies to all the comic book stores. Image was so late with every single order that even Diamond Publishing would cancel the orders themselves, mean, and then it would take even longer for that money to be refunded to the comic book stores. So what would happen in essence was image would be late, money that the comic book stores had already given uh, to purchase the comics months before that they don't have anymore at the comic book store, um, it, that it's not tied up means less cash flow and then now with the orders being cancelled the comic book stores get nothing for them until they receive their refunds weeks to several months afterward add those all up and you'll see a disaster in place in terms of of, of you know comic book stores trying to stay afloat so that's what Deathmate led to um, at that time with so many speculators leaving and so many casual comic book readers leaving this impacted the um, comic book stores and with the comic book stores now experiencing continuous late shipments if any kind of shipments from Image Comics and Deathmate being hyped as the last, you know, as the biggest crossover event of all time. Now you had um, these comic book stores trying one last time to try to get uh, some kind of, uh, you know, a last Hail Mary of sorts where they could make a big sale off of Deathmate. But once again, Image Publishing, uh, who lived up to their standards, essentially shipped late months late we're talking up to four months late or so on the issues fans couldn't care less about those comics afterward and so when the comics were eventually shipped and nobody bought them including the notorious death may red then that meant that the comic book stores were out that money because even though they received the issues they no longer had fans that were interested and so many 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 shops closed all during this era right there Deathmate Red was late because it was uh, apparently written and drawn by notorious and very controversial comic book artist Rob Liefeld. Um, if anyone knows that name, they know that that name never has a middle a middle ground in terms of feelings. Um, people either love him or people hate him. And with this issue, it was so late that it caused many comic book stores again to be... Uh, hold up on cash and then when the comic finally came uh, nobody bought it and with comic book stores being out all that money especially since they bought it probably in the three to four dollar uh, range per comic then that essentially that was it that was the final nail in the coffin and that solidified the implosion of the comic book industry within the mid 90s that's when things got so bad again that issues that were normally selling in the millions now if anything sold in the teens, probably fourteen, fifteen thousand. I remember reading an article that um, Valiant Comics, that was later purchased by Acclaim Entertainment, um, and became Acclaim Comics. They uh, were, were one of those fields where they were routinely selling hundreds and hundreds of thousands of issues. And by the time the implosion happened, they were lucky to sell ten thousand per issue. That's how bad things got. And again. Um, can we blame? Is the urban legend true in terms of everything being essentially associated to one issue, which is Death Made Red? I would say 50-50 yes. Um, it was the final straw when it came to everything that spectacularly failed within the comic book industry in the 90s. It was the epitome of everything bad and everything wrong, and it led to the demise of so many other uh, people that were within that industry. But there were also other factors that added up to the effect that Death Made Red had. So, but yeah, if anyone has any um, personal knowledge, um, anybody that happened to, let's say, work in the comic book industry field, or happened to know somebody that had, let's say, a comic book store, or even if yourself, if you had one, you know, write your comments below. So you tell me, let us know what that feeling was like. Uh, 